Hello and welcome back to this series of how to make videos which I hope will be of interest to teachers and teaching assistants in primary and middle schools. In a much earlier video in this series um, I showed how to make a simple moving toy uh, using elastic band power and it uses this um, wheel that I make where I sellotape a number 18 elastic band to a cotton reel and then fit the cotton reel into a piece of pipe insulation I call these foam wheels and then the assembled wheel is hooked on to a v-shaped piece of wire folded up from a giant paper clip with hooks on the end so that's hooked over the end like this and then the toy to, uh, to make the toy move you pull it backwards along the ground and that winds up the the wheel and when you let go it scuttles forward. You get a nice sort of uh, scuttling motion because the rubber band isn't in the center of the wheel so the wheel wobbles as it unwinds to give a nice sort of lifelike bug movement. Um, it only moves about one or two meters, three meters on a good day uh, but in another early de design in this series I showed how to get much more out of a number 18 rubber band. Um, this is the uh, elastic band roller and uh, it's fitted uh, to this um, wheel assembly here. There's a washer there to cut down friction and if you wind it up about 50 times or even 60 times and let it go that will roll easily the length of a school hall. Now, my record is 35 meters. Very impressive output from just um, a small number 18 rubber band. But for many years I wanted to combine the two. I wanted to get the impressive distance but be able to fit a body to this mechanism and it's taken me years to come up with an answer. I think I've finally come up with a solution. I'd like to show you how to make it. Uh, there's two parts really. There's the body and the power unit. Um, now Again, I, as with lots of these videos, I've designed a template using Coral Draw and uh, a free .pdf of this template is available on my website. The link is next to the um, link for the video. But you don't have to have this. All you need is um, a basic V-shaped, a folded V-shape for the body and um, you can encourage the pupils to uh, add to it, perhaps add a cockpit, aerofoil, spoilers, perhaps some branding uh, as, as, as well. Um, I've photocopied the um, template onto a card, this is 280 micron card and as you probably know if you've watched some of these videos, whenever I've got a a fold up template with dotted lines. I always score the dotted lines. I use a small screwdriver. So we've got the center dotted line down the middle. Press quite hard, once should be enough. Uh, the cockpit by the way is entirely optional. You don't have to cut and fold this. And we've got two dotted lines here for the front fins. And that's it. Uh, next we're going to cut it out. Uh, you can just cut out the whole shape. Um, but as it's symmetrical you can save some time by folding it in half first and then cut it out while it's folded. So that's much faster. Now to, to save even more money I've printed some wheels on this card. You only need two wheels because it's got two wheels at the front. Uh, at the rear you've got the power unit but there's, there's four wheels here because um, I have double thickness wheels. But I'll, I'll show you the wheels in a minute. Um, there's two more cuts which I've forgotten which is the, the, for the cockpit. There's a cut there 
and a cut there. And then you fold over the cockpit, that's quite hard because it's two thicknesses of card, and then double fold it. So fold it one way and fold it the, the other way. Unfold it and then push that down so you're turning that part into a, into a valley. So mountain, mountain, valley, and just pop it down and then fold the whole thing and you've got a representation of the cockpit. But as I said, that's entirely optional. You can leave that unfolded. The only other fold to do is the front fins, which are folded up horizontal like that. And another optional feature is this hole at the back. Don't worry if you don't have a hole punch, it is optional. Just punch out that hole. I'll explain what that, what that is a bit later on. Uh, we're now going to fit the front axle. Um, I'm going to use the... Um, wheels on the template. Uh, you cut them out. You could have, of course, used um, card wheels, uh, smaller versions of, of these. I'm just going to stick these together with Pritt stick. Let's try and do this make without using a glue gun for once. I don't think it has any Corex in it either. That's unusual for my videos. Um, so stick these two wheels together and then to make the hole in the middle you could use a compass point dividers. Um, I've got a screwdriver that I've uh, sharpened to a point and just push into a sponge block or a piece of plasticine to make an initial hole and then use a sharp pencil to enlarge the hole a little bit more but only a little bit because you want it to be a tight fit on the axle. This is a um, four millimeter dowel. It's about 12 centimeters long. Just get a sanding block and just smooth off the edges a little bit. That will help it to push onto the wheel. And push it on. Sometimes they stay on if you get it fairly tight. Uh, I usually find that after a while you need to put a, a blob of hot glue on the end to stop the wheels from falling off. Now I've done this out of sequence for some reason. What I should have done is the straw first of all. We're going to fit a straw underneath the front fins leaving a little bit sticking out. So get some scissors and just cut off about there. Paper straws of course, I've gone over to paper straws. And fix on with some sticky tape quite like these paper straws, they're, they're quite thick and not so easy to squash as the plastic straws. So I'm a, I'm a convert. And then again the other side, I hope you're seeing this, just loop the sellotape round. You could have of course used a glue gun. Try and get it straight so that your racer runs true. So there's the straw fitted. So now we can slide the axle through. Yes, I've got enough for the other end for the other wheel. I've already done the other wheel in case you were wondering. And pop that on. I think they probably are going to need some glue, but we'll leave them for now. So there's the front wheels assembled. We're now going to fit the wire frame at the back. Um, I make these out of um, giant paper clips. You can buy boxes of these. They're very cheap, just a few pounds from office suppliers. Um, if you can't face bending them out into that shape, you can buy them from me already bent. My website address is along the top there, www.slstc.suffolklea.org.uk. Um, I must have made thousands of these. Um, uh, let me show you how I do it. I use uh, round nose pliers. First of all we straighten out the paper clip. You let, after you've done a few hundred of these you've got really strong fingers. The last bit there does need pliers to help straighten out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then have to find halfway and I do it by balancing, finding where it balances on the pliers. There we go. Then bend down into a V shape and then the hooks you bend outwards 
turn the pliers round, bend inwards, and once again, outwards and inwards. And there's your V-shaped frame. As I say, you can buy this from me ready-made if you can't face doing it yourself. We're now going to stick this on underneath the body at right angles to the fold there and parallel to the back. So we just need some sellotape. When you put the sellotape down put it um, along the paper clip, not across it. And really push down hard with your fingernails because you want that to be really securely fixed. Have you got that? Now we do the other side. Another piece of tape. And fix that on there. So that's our finished body of the racer. I'm now going to show you how to make the um, power unit. For the power unit we need two card discs. You can try different diameters. Uh, these are um, 8 centimeter diameter. I've also, I've also used 7 and 6 centimeter diameter and there's a nice um, science experiment you can do by co comparing racers with different diameter um, wheels. I'm going to use these uh, 8 centimeter card discs. You can make your own or again you can buy these in packs of 100 from my supply service. And we're going to fit them with uh, four pieces of wood and I see that I've forgotten the drawing pins. Just bear with me while I grab a tin of drawing pins. You need eight. You could alternatively you fix them on with a glue gun. Now when I'm working with pupils doing this I get them to be, put these in very carefully using a sponge block and push into a sponge block like that to avoid any chance of them stabbing themselves. Um, I'm going to do this very quickly. I've had lots of practice. We push them in at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock making sure that the drawing pin doesn't extend beyond the circumference of the card disc. So I'm keeping my fingers well out of the way. But pupils probably be a good idea to push into a sponge block. There's the first one. Put it points downwards. Then the second one, as I say, you could use hot glue gun to glue the bits of wood on. Class of 30, that's 240 drawing pins. Okay, now we're going to uh, fit the pieces of wood on. These, is, these are four centimetre long pieces of square section wood. This is eight millimetre by eight millimetre. It comes in 60 centimetre lengths. It's available from my supply service or from most education suppliers if they have a DNT section. Now I can almost just push these on. Uh, pupils will almost certainly need a small hammer just to tap on the four pieces of wood. Oop. Drawing pins collapsed. Nope. The drawing pins folded over. It happens sometimes. Let's try again. Perhaps there was a knot in the wood. That's better. And then the fourth one. And then put the other side on. Try and line up the drawing pin in the centre of the wood. I like to do the one opposite. You might need to bend it around a bit to get it to go in the middle of the wood. It's exactly the same technique as for the elastic band roller. The only difference is the spaces are much shorter. So there we are, there's our, our uh, wheel which we're now going to fit with the uh, elastic bands. Now uh, this time we're going to be using smaller elastic bands and we're going to be using two. These are number 14 elastic bands. Uh, for this kind of design and technology, get to know elastic bands on the, on the, on the box. You'll see um, a table here that gives you the, um, the sizes and tells you the uh, corresponding measurements of that size. I use number 16s, number 18s a lot. 
uh, number 24s and I think it's a number 65 I think I use. Uh, 63, yes, yeah, 16, 18, 24 and 63 are the four sizes that I use. Uh, we need to link these two rubber bands together. Um, I hope you you know how to do this. You just pull them through like this. Might need to get an adult to help you do that. So that you've got the two number 14 elastic bands joined together. We then pass one end through one hole, pull the knot through and then trap on off the end with um, a small piece of dowel four or five centimetres long and pull it tight. And get it roughly in the centre. Have you got that? And now we're going to fix, uh, tape the dowel onto the card disc but we're going to keep the tape away from the rubber band because we're going to pull that out in a minute. So one piece of tape over one end and one piece of tape over the other. You could use hot glue. And then we've now got to get the other end of the rubber band through the other hole. Quite tricky. I think it might be easier for pupils with their smaller fingers. Yes, I've managed to do it. Again, pull it back a bit and trap it off with another piece of dowel like that and once again secure the dowel with two more pieces of sticky tape and that is our power unit ready just pull the bands out at each end so that you've got the knot in the middle can you see that and as you can see if I start to wind it up one way when you release it it unwinds the other way. So that's going to be our power unit. So that hooks onto the onto the uh, paper clip hook. You might need to pull the bend it out just a little bit to stop it scraping and then even it up so that it's exactly in the centre. So when it's unwound it should just be tight enough to stop it sagging. Um, I like to mark at least one of the sticks and that helps me when I'm counting how many times I turn it. So you can wind this up 50 times if you turn it that way and then if you wind it this way it will go forward. You soon learn which way to turn it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. You can turn it uh, 50 or even 60 times. I won't bore you by doing that, but I'll just show you that it does already work. Um, do you remember the hole? All that is for is, um, this is optional extra, if you put a straw through there, it's a way of locking the wheel off so that after you wound it up 60 times, if you've got to take it somewhere and you don't want to have to hold the wheel, then the straw will just lock it in place. Um, if you'd like to, to hold, um, in the second part of the video, I'm going to take all these down to our lovely school hall here at Ivydale and uh, we'll find out just how far they go. So if you'd just like to hang on and uh, we'll, we'll do some testing. Uh, I hope you enjoy making these. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, I wound all these up 50 times. Let's see if they'll reach the other side of Oh yes, easily reach the other side. Get a nice straight one. Yep, we're going to have to get a bigger hole. 